On the 2nd of March, 1919, the collapse of the French Republic would come. The Germans began the great spring offensive into the French heartland. This offensive would bring the downfall of the Entente Tower and France as a whole. At first, the great offensive seemed like it would be just an ordinary offensive and end up in deadlock like the rest of the German offensives in the first Weltkrieg. But the French wouldn't hold their ground for long. And after months of grueling battle repelling the German offensive, the French had had enough and the army began to mutiny lacking the support of the Italians who had surrendered earlier in the year. And because of the mutiny, the Germans began gaining ground unlike anything seen in the war yet. The French were losing ground too quickly to continue the fight. After losing hundreds of kilometers of land, the French decided to surrender along with it the British and Belgians. And on the 12th of August 1919, the Armistice of Chantilly was signed, bringing it end to the war. While the war was over, the conflict in France was not Dissatisfied because of the outcome of the war and the subsequent punishment in the Treaty of Versailles, the citizens of France quickly became radicals. Right-wing and left-wing radicals frequently killed each other in the streets, and soon the communists had had an of the government arm. The 20th of November 1919, the Commune of Paris was proclaimed, followed by a number of communist uprisings across France in its major cities. France had broken out into civil war. The army under Marshal Petain tried to stamp out this violence, but the French communist guerrilla warfare was too much to handle, and as fast as it had started, the Silos war was over. The communists had Pétain's forces surrounded in the south of France. Luckily for Pétain, a skillful and speedy retreat was made with the navy escorting multiple French nationalist armies to the island of Corsica and French North Africa. In North Africa, a rival government to the French commune was set up the French national state led by Marshal Pétain. His rule stayed stable, but was slowly declining as the French hadn't launched any major attempt to retake the mainland. Pétain was losing popularity and cracks were beginning to show in the French national state. Widespread protests by the French legionary undermined, undermined Pétain's rule. And Arab rebels in the south of the state were resisting the weak French rule. If Pétain was to survive, he would need to make big changes to the country. First, before Pétain could make any major changes to the country, he needed to secure his government's popularity. He would need to make a coalition with another nationalist faction to survive. He decided to side with the Orleanist monarchist faction. And Jean III was crowned king of the French national state with Pétain helping run the government as well. A first step towards retaking the mainland was to improve the French national state's economy. He would do this in three steps. First, the connections between the north and south of the country had to be improved so the north could get access to the south's resource-rich areas east of. So the government built the Trans-Saharan Railway. Next, the monopolies on the French industry had to be broken. So the government started to nationalize the factories of the state and smash high finance. Finally, the government, with the king's approval, took funds from the centuries-old riches of Orleans' family and invested into opening new factories across the nation. The policy was named Royal Corporatism. Next, with the success of the economic reforms of the king and Pétain's government, the military forces had to be improved. As Pétain was the leader and leader of the army, the military was neglected as Pétain focused on his political career. So first, a new army chief had to be appointed. Two plans seemed good enough to be approved. Charles' goal's plan was to create a small, mobile and elite army of motorized and tanks. And Admiral Dolan's plan was to coordinate the Navy and Army into a collaborative force and increase the size of the army. After much thinking, the king approved Admiral Dolan's plan. If the French national state was to reclaim its homeland, it would need a large army and get gear and they get their army and army of collaborators to cross the Mediterranean. So Edmund Darlin's plan was put into action. The army and air force was expanded with the marines and army receiving upgrades along with the navy and soon enough a skilled fighting force was created with thousands of fighters, hundreds of ships and a large army of 700,000 men. The French national government might now be ready to cross the Mediterranean. Now the French national state was prepared to invade the mainland. But first, it needed a plan. First, in the early hours of the morning, the Navy and Air Forces would set out to Corsica and then refuel there. Then they would reach the coast of the mainland and bombard the coast, damaging any defenses and killing many of the garrisons there. Next army would begin the landings. The French Marines would lead the landings and seize the port of Marseille and surrounding area. <laughs>
national state has liberated France from the communist and victory has been achieved. The king is now king of the entire French Empire. And the communists only remain in the north. Like this video, consider subscribers.